I have a lot of questions about Europe, but first of all, I have to get your thoughts on what's going on in the UK, because today we've seen a huge U-turn from the UK government. Markets really flipping on this country. I don't want to create trouble, but when you look at that country, is it a message in terms of what not to do going into the winter, perhaps, for you? I think it's very good news that they backtracked, uh, in particular when it comes to the re reduction of the taxes on the wealthiest parts of society, because it really shows that it's not only a matter of financial stability, it's also a matter of fairness. We're all confronted with the challenge, how to contain prices, how to support our economies, how to fund our public services, and we need to ensure that we have fiscal sustainability, financial stability, but also a fair distribution of the impact of the war. So that means essentially tax the rich more to some extent. That's what all international institutions are recommending, and this is what the Spanish uh, government has been defending when it comes to the international framework. Not, not specifically or not only this dimension, but generally we need a fair tax system. We need to avoid a race to the bottom, which at the end of the day is making all of us poorer, when we need stronger states to also face the blackmail coming from Russia. And that's a message perhaps for Liz Truss, but I don't want to create trouble intentionally perhaps between the, the EU and, and the UK. So let's talk about Europe. It seems to me there's forces that are pulling from different ways. You have demand destruction, which seems to be working. At least the message is resonating with Europeans. The storage is up, but you have an escalation in the war and an escalation in the energy war. In your view, what's the outlook for Europe going into the winter? We're challenging, at a very challenging moment now because the war is entering a new phase, or so it seems. We also see that Nord Stream supply was cut 1st of September. Uh, the, the positive uh, element here is that prices are not continuing to escalate as they did in past months when Putin was using the energy blackmail. No? So I think that actually what we see now is that the storage level is appropriate, that Europe is, is having a stronger voice when it comes to international energy markets, and we should continue in that direction with a response which is united, determined, and also based on solidarity between the different member states. When you say solidarity, Last week, Germany came out with a 200 billion euro package to save their households and companies. Is that solidarity for you? Well, I understand that each country is, diff is subject to a different kind of challenge. No, I mean, the uh, increase of energy prices hit Spain, maybe before other countries, because of the flexibility of our electricity markets. But now we see that inflation is already going down in Spain, whereas uh, we see in Germany that the situation is very different. They have a higher dependence on Russia and gas and oil, and so uh, we have to be respectful of the different specificities of the different countries and ensure that our framework and our rules are fit for purpose in the sense of allowing for this flexibility in terms of the response at the national level, but reinforcing the European level instruments so that we ensure fair treatment of all citizens and companies throughout the EU. So to reaffirm that message as a final question, on Wednesday the Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez will meet with the German Chancellor. Is he going to convince the Germans to drop their opposition to this price cap on gas? I hope so. Well, definitely Can Spain, well, uh, for the last year, Spain has been pushing for a European response. We've been pushing for price caps. We've been pushing for a joint purchases, uh, an, um, an overhaul of the European legislation. We managed to have the, the Iberic exception, which is allowing us to have a gas price cap uh, between Spain and, in Spain and Portugal. And this is already saving European, Spanish uh, citizens and companies more than 2.5 billion euros. You know, and it's proven to allow us to have lower prices in other countries. It has even decoupled the wholesale gas price from the Mediterranean, the, the Iberian uh, gas from the TTF reference, which shows that we can uh, act and we can change things if we act together. So I am sure this will be uh, discussed in the summit between Spain and Germany on Wednesday, and I hope we do convince Germany to move in this direction.